I know that it sometimes strikes members as odd that some words and phrases are deemed unparliamentary, while others are permitted as being part of the cut and thrust of debate. The context in which particular words are used can affect their meaning, making them more or less acceptable to those to whom they refer. It is for these reasons that, from now on, I intend to take a different approach to the language that will and will not be permitted uh, in this chamber. Rather than making judgments on the basis of particular words or phrases that have been ruled here or elsewhere as on parliamentary language, I will judge members' remarks against the standards of courtesy, good temper and moderation. These are what I consider to be the standards of parliamentary debate. This Assembly and the people who elected it would have better served if its members were to adhere uh, to these high standards. In making my judgment, I will consider the nature of members' remarks and the contents in which they were made. I have acknowledged that at times members will wish to express their views forcefully and to engage in robust debate. That is acceptable. But let me make it absolutely clear what is not acceptable is where the tone or nature of remarks become uh, so ill-tempered and bad-mannered that they are closer to discourtesy and disorder than to debate. Where that happens, I will interrupt members and ask members to moderate their remarks. If a member refuses such requests from the chair, they will be asked to resume uh, their seats, and I may rule that they should not be called to speak uh, for some time in this chamber on any debate. Remarks made from a seated position will be treated exactly in the same way. As always, the Chair's ruling on such matters will not be open to challenge. And let me say this morning, and I speak directly to the whips of political parties, you as whips have a huge responsibility to also discipline and have discipline within uh, your own groups and individual members. And I, what I don't want to see in the future, whips rising in their place, trying to defend a member who they know has crossed the line. So let me make it absolutely clear, whips have a huge responsibility in instilling discipline uh, within their own members and groups. And let me make it clear, if they are not prepared to do that, I can assure you the Chair will do it. So let, let's make it absolutely clear here, uh, once and, and for all, where the responsibility of whips uh, sit and lie within this chamber in representing their groups. It's just not the responsibility of the chair uh, to instill discipline uh, within this house. There's also a huge responsibility on the whips of the various political parties in this house. Other occasions, as in the past, members' remarks or allegations that fall so far short of the standard I have outlined, I will ask the member to withdraw them. I certainly hope that members do not place themselves or the chair in that position. Where they do so, I hope that they will see the merit in respecting the ruling of the chair and withdraw them, as some members have done in recent months. Turning to the specific point of order raised last week by Mr Storey, use of words hypocrite and hypocrisy, I have examined the official reports and, in my view, Mr Storey could and should have expressed his views in a more moderate way. I trust that he will take this morning's ruling on board and temper his future remarks accordingly. Indeed, I would ask all members to study my remarks when they are published in the official report, to reflect upon them and to take account of them when they exercise the privilege and responsibility of speaking in this chamber.